Hello and welcome to Politics London. Coming up, the estate regeneration plans that have been on hold since before the Olympics. We don't need to live in a castle. We don't live to live in posh houses. We just want an estate where everybody knows everybody and live happily ever after. Newham has one of the longest housing waiting lists in the country. The council wants to rebuild a 23-acre estate right next to the Olympic Park to create more homes. The plans date way back to before the London 2012 Olympics, 10 years ago now. Recently, residents voted in favour of the estate's regeneration, but questions are being asked about how fair the vote was. Helen Drew met one local who feels betrayed. I've lived in this place for 52 years, and it was a thriving estate. It was a family estate, and you've sold us out. You've ruined a lot of people's lives. Agnes Thomas gave birth to her youngest son in this East London tower block. The council moved her out just before the London Olympics for a redevelopment that still hasn't happened. What floor were you on? I was on the ninth floor. It's a 22-floor block. We're on the Carpenters' estate in the shadow of the Olympic Park, where last month residents got to vote on regenerating the whole estate and demolishing over half of the 700 homes. Agnes now lives on the fringes of the estate, away from the block she knew and loved, and she voted against, but 73% voted for. I don't believe it was a true vote. I think the people who vote, many of the people who voted yes, they don't know anything about the estate. These are people who was just moved in because of Newham knew what was happening, and they just gave them a temporary accommodation. We did speak to a resident who voted yes, who's lived here for 30 years. It's been very difficult to find residents who voted yes. Why do you think that is? Um, I think because it's uh, kind of a split on the estate. Yeah, I think nobody wants to say how they really feel, maybe because of the community spirit and, and it's just too close-knit. Um, you know, you might look around and see a lot of houses. This is one of being one of the problems here, but a lot of them are empty. So there is only a small group of us, so everybody knows each other, where they live. The vote came about with what's called an estate ballot. Sadiq Khan introduced the ballot policy back in 2018 for estate regeneration schemes where the plan is to demolish social housing. It's essentially a referendum for residents, a yes or no vote, the plan on the Carpenter's estate is to build over 2,000 homes, with half at social rent levels. Newham Council and its housing company, Populo Living, spent around £350,000 in advance of the yes vote. Some say the process was biased. A lot of the things that went on in this campaign go completely beyond what would be allowed in a democratic election. It's the amount spent per voter, which in this case was around £750. That dwarfs any spending limit in a democratic election. This result cannot stand in a democratic way. It makes a mockery of the mayor's manifesto promise to make sure there is genuine resident support. The mayor of Newham disputes this. There was a criticism or concern that there were tactics used that compelled and forced people to vote yes. That's absolutely not the case. We had an open, transparent process, a process of integrity, where all the facts over a three-year process of co-design were laid down. We have the highest number of residents living in temporary accommodation, more than the entire North of England combined, we have some 27,000 people on our housing waiting list. It's my moral duty to ensure that we are putting forward the investment and that we conduct a ballot process of the highest integrity and I am confident that that's what we have done. Before we left the estate, we popped into the local pub and the views very much sided with Agnes. And do you know anyone who voted yes? No. Everyone I know voted no to the... I want, I want to lose your own. The Carpenters' regeneration is going to break up a whole community. What's the community like here? Very, very social, very tight-knit. The regeneration of this estate has been discussed for over 10 years and last month a decision was made. But now many want the vote to take place again. 
Joining me now is Saskia O'Hara from Focus E15, a group that campaigns on social housing issues, who knows all about this development very well. Welcome to you. Great to have you with us on the programme. So why has this development taken so long, Saskia? Well, there's been a stop and start nature um, to these redevelopment plans since 2001, actually, and they've involved um, many different plans, even uh, a £1 billion plan for a UCL student campus. Um, but the reason this has taken so long is that, as you can see, this is a tight-knit community and they've fought very, very hard to keep their homes. That's why I would say this has taken so long. But there has been a ballot policy process, hasn't there? Um, you have issues with that, don't you? Tell us what they are. Yes, yeah, certainly. So um, this uh, plan involves Greater London Authority funding. And because of that, there's been an estate ballot. The issues that we have with this and residents have with this is that the practice of this ballot has led to a, a democratic deficit. Um, why? Because, for example, a local authority, a council, can spend uh, uncapped public funds to secure a yes vote, in this case to demolition, while residents like Agnes have no resources, have no funding to put across their points of view. It's not a level playing field. Um, the residents on Carpenter's estate are saying it but also residents across London estates are saying it. For example, in Lovelane and Tottenham, councillors are calling for an inquiry into the same thing. Now, the council, Newham Council, disputes that £350,000 was spent on canvassing. What, what do you understand that it was spent on? Well, from residents and from being on the ground, what did we see? We see saw posters with vote yes everywhere. We saw um, daily canvassers who had a script that said sell the vote for yes in one minute and 30 seconds and five seconds. We saw a fun day um, the day after the ballot was originally due to commence. Um, I mean, this brings up another question of how do we see this information? Why is this information about exactly what money is spent uh, published and audited? I think these are uh, the questions that residents have. And as Sean Berry said, it wouldn't be allowed in an election or a referendum. So why is it being allowed in estate ballots?